Would you like to know the main difference between a principal cloud architect and a regular cloud architect or a distinguished cloud architect and a regular cloud architect or any other architect for that matter? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs and I've been all kinds of an architect for the last 25 years. I had my first principal architect job about 25 years ago and my architecture career has just gone up. Now in this video, I really want you to understand the top skills that employers are begging for. What tech executives say are the top 25% of the performers which have these skills, which are incidentally the exact same thing that typically separates a distinguished architect or a principal architect from the rest. And this can have a multi hundred thousand dollar impact to your salary every year. So I want you to understand the difference. Now, one component of the difference typically with a distinguished architect in a cloud architect is actually knowledge in a particular specialty. Typically, the principal architects or distinguished architects do have a focused area of expertise. Maybe it's a focused area in some element of networking or a focused area in some element of security, but there is that component. Now, typically speaking, there's some other things we do in our job, but I don't want to go there right now. What I want to talk about is, about is the attributes of the best of the best, which gets them into these principal cloud architect roles and distinguished cloud architect roles. And even if that's not your goal, these are still the skills that typically help improve your career more, increase your salary more than other skills. So the first thing is going to be strategic thinking. Now, what separates the people that are the best of the best, that are in the best of the best roles, like a distinguished architect, is the ability to see everything. So the ability to see everything, understand from the client and the client's executives, the real business goals here, and turn that into a coherent technology roadmap that's going to strategically provide a competitive advantage. And that also means understanding how various technologies uh, th that exist, how the technologies work and fit together, and how they can be used strategically. Now, that also means aligning people, processes, and technology. That's another component about that. Now, when we deal with a principal architect or a distinguished architect, the key to remember is they have a lot of knowledge and a lot of abilities to make a decision with uncertainty. Now, the reality is I wish there was gonna be a perfect answer in any cloud architecture or enterprise architecture, but there's not. Architecture is evaluating all the possible trade-offs and what's gonna be best in there. And the people that have the best knowledge, both technical and business and systems-wide, are able to see any kind of change in its impact to the system before others will be. And that helps them make better decisions under uncertainty. And I can remember when I was working as a principal architect, there were so many situations where it was all about your professional judgment. And that's a lot of it, which is decision-making under uncertainty. That's your knowledge. That's your expertise. Now, when you look at what principal architects do, distinguished architects do, and even all architects, but at the level of the principal architect, it's much more about your levels of influence and your levels of communication. Because you're going to be in a position, typically speaking, as a principal or distinguished architect, where you're speaking at almost every conference that you could possibly imagine. You're going to be speaking to a lot of clients, executives. You're going to be shaping the industry, creating thought leadership to shape the industry, participating in industrial working groups or standards bodies. And that means if you've got a clear, concise message, you'll be able to explain the what and the why, and that's going to get more people to buy into what you've seen. So the, the ability to create a great executive perspective, a summary or a board presentation or do that, that's something you're going to be doing as a principal architect or a distinguished architect. Now, along with that comes the ability to tell a story and build a narrative. So we've got this new technology, what's in it for our clients and what's in it for you to give you a competitive advantage. Those types of things, the ability to tell a story. Now, when it comes to bigger roles, and I don't care where it's medicine, law, distinguished architecture, it's really about your ability to listen and how much information you can pick up when people say something to you, when you walk through the hallways, when you ask client questions, when you ask stakeholder questions, can you take it all in and remember it all? And can you draw conclusions and see connections between the two? And a lot of that's based on your listening. And it's not just listening, it's knowing which questions to ask to truly uncover the concerns or the needs of the client. Now, you wouldn't think about it. You'd start thinking distinguished architect, principal architect, more about the tech, but now it's going to be more about your emotional and social intelligence. 
So can you understand the stakeholders' needs? Can you see it from their perspective, for example? Are you able to see when things are getting stressful, your emotions, so you're able to self-regulate your emotions so you don't uh, blow up or, or get angry and then have people not want to give you information in the future or work with you. So that's going to be there. Now, as part of your emotional and, so and social intelligence, in a big organization, there's going to be conflicts between things. What's good for sales is bad for marketing. What's bad for marketing can affect products. So there's all this kind of stuff going on back and forth in these dynamics. So when you're at that principal or distinguished level, you're going to need that business acumen and the knowledge to be able to understand what each needs and kind of mitigate between them and negotiate between them because each division has their goals. And, and part of the architecture is finding what's going to be best for the majority of the system. So lots of negotiation and conflict resolution there. Now, one of the things we do a lot of as principal architects or distinguished architects is coach and mentor. We're typically providing architecture training uh, for members of our organization, potentially customer organizations. We uh, work with individual people that work with us on architecture teams. We try to understand their concerns, try to recommend and coach them to get to their goals. A lot of that we typically do. Now, uh, we typically also need to be dele delegate and delegate effectively, which means we have to have good leadership skills, good management skills, and be able to delegate based upon some key performance indicator and get results based upon that. So keep that in the back of your mind. And in a, go a good architect at this level, we're going to be working and leading architecture teams of 50 to 100 people sometimes, or we're just going to be parachuting in to help some other architecture team. But whatever the case may be, if we're leading a team, we need to create some kind of culture of psychological safety where people feel safe and secure working with us and want to work with us. Now, when you ask tech executives, what are the other things that you see in the top best employees, especially those that you promote to principal architect, distinguished architect, you know, CTO roles, uh, enterprise architect, chief enterprise architect roles, what do you want? And they say someone that can lead through transformation. And that means they understand that it's, there's the, that we have, the person needs to be able to understand why we're changing, what's in it for the organization training, and even create that cultural change necessary to create a big change in an organization. So understanding change management, understanding the social and psychological dynamics behind that is definitely something that we do a lot more of as a principal architect, distinguished architect, but also as a chief architect in these other roles as well. Now, I can almost say that architecture is either balancing trade-offs or managing stakeholders, and that would be a lot of what we really do. So the key here is to be able to meet with the stakeholders in the organization and understand each one's individual needs and their competing needs and create a strategy that's going to be the best we can possibly do. And then create something, get their input, and tune in until we have something that's going to be definitely good and beneficial for the business. So that ability to cross-functionally align uh, organizations and stakeholders, that's going to be critical to us and a lot more of what we do. And the rest of it's really about our leadership and the, what we can create and can we create, can we go to that product, for example, and create new features that are created based upon what customers are looking for? Are we creating a council of customers and periodically asking them for what they want and then feeding that into our organization? Do we work with marketing to say these are the problems people actually have and then craft solutions or reference architectures for various industries? These are the kind of things that we're doing as principal architects. So if you really think about it, yes, it's a combination of being a little better, typically speaking, your career, or like having a specialty. For me, I was an IP multicast uh, architect and then consulted on video and anything that was related to IP multicast in my first principal architect role. It could be that. And then later, as I moved into these bigger chief type architect roles, it was, for an it was creating reference architectures and architectural strategy for an entire industry like healthcare. But those are the main differences in the skills and what we do as a cloud architect versus a principal architect. Uh, obviously, there's plenty of videos on this channel on what we do as a cloud architect, but this one is dedicated to principal architects and distinguished architects because these are some of the most fun jobs I've ever had in my architecture career. And whether it's a principal network architect, principal security architect, principal cloud architect, or distinguished architect, it is a great role. It is a fun role. You get to be at the tip of the spear and constantly be on the edge and learn and learn and learn. And of course, that's the last element of any kind of a distinguished architect, principal architect, or any great person in their field is to approach life with a thirst and a desire for knowledge and get better in some way every single day.
So in this video, we talked about what uh, you really need to be great at to be a principal architect or a distinguished architect outside of the technology. These are coincidentally what tech executives say what they want in the top 25% best you know, tech employees that they actually have. So that'll help you rise in other careers as well. Now, if you'd like to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or a security architect or an AI architect or a network architect or any other architect for that matter, uh, we have a free architecture webinar that we run once every week. We'll talk about what we do in these roles. We'll talk about the skills that you need in these roles. We'll talk about uh, what it takes to get hired when you lack experience, how to bypass the hiring manager and go straight I mean, how to bypass AR, HR, and go straight to the hiring manager so you don't get auto-rejected, and then we'll answer any questions you have. Now, the link to this free architecture webinar, which is called Cloud Architect Webinar, but I'll cover any architecture careers you want, is in the description of this video. Uh, you can find that webinar, you can sign up, and uh, I can speak with you on Zoom, and I'll answer any career questions you absolutely have. We also have architecture programs for our architecture careers, which you can check out on our website if you desire. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, maybe subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video. Take care.